to come on out and enjoy the fellowship with the Providence Baptist Church Fellowship. We're coming from all across the nation to be here at this church to sing God's praises, to fellowship, and to lift him up. Come and join us. And to members of the Providence Baptist Church uh, Fellowship, we're looking forward to receiving you. And we're excited that you're coming here to West Hyersville, where we will join our hands and our hearts to give God the praise, for God is worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. Amen. So please come and join us in that celebration. Young adults, get ready. Young adults, youth and young adults, get ready. Uh, the 30th of this month, the, I'm sorry, 31st of this month, the uh, fifth Sunday is Youth and Young Adult Sunday. Now, you remember what they did just a few weeks ago. Uh, they, they're going to do it again on this coming uh, fifth Sunday of this month. So please, young adult ministry, youth ministry, let us prepare our hearts our minds, prepare your dance, your poetry, your singing, everything you want to do on that day. You are in charge on the fifth Sunday of this month for youth and young. Didn't we have a good time last time? Amen. Even the congregation joined us in singing every praise. And this time we're going to do something else. Come on, let's have a great time in the name of the Lord. All of you here today who are celebrating birthdays, in the month of July, please stand. All July birthdays. Allah. Amen. Amen. We say happy birthday to you. We pray God's blessings upon you. The fact that you are about to see another birthday is evidence that God is good. That he has brought you a mighty long way. Come on, y'all. Let's sing happy birthday to our honorees today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Happy birthday. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for them. Give God the praise. Uh, Reverend Dunn and, and Sister Suan have, uh, we have something in common. You have the same month, July and July. Well, it seems like me and my wife, uh, uh, we have the same time, we have the same birthdays in the same month. I'm the 4th, she's the 16th. Yeah, January 4th. And she, no, not July. <laughs> no, January 4th and 16th. Thank God for life. Thank God for his blessing. Uh, is there anyone here today celebrating wedding anniversaries this month? Oh, here we go. Amen. There's one more. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, July the 4th, is my, well, our wedding anniversary. Praise God, somebody. Praise the Lord. And we thank God for keeping us, keeping all of us. You do know right now there are some serious attacks on the family. And, and, and the devil is doing all he can to destroy, not even, not only the devil, society is doing all they can to destroy Christian marriages. So thank God that we're still together even in these dangerous times, these sad times. We say to all of us, congratulations, may God bless you as you celebrate this month. And Reverend Lynette Wright and Reverend James Wright are also celebrating uh, their wedding anniversary this weekend and we pray God's blessings uh, upon them as they continue uh, to celebrate their wedding anniversary. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why don't you just take about, take about 15 seconds and just turn around, just wave at somebody. Hey. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, 
I, I know we're in, we're in the COVID time and can shake hands and hug like we used to, but we can wave <laughs> and we can say, hey, <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank you so much for this time. At this time, we'll have the choir who will come and bless us with its election.
what we've come to do, to give him praise. Amen? Amen. I, I saw you, Herman. I saw you back there dancing. <laughs> in fact, I saw you marching in dancing. <laughs> yeah, we got some room up here when you're ready. <laughs> Amen. As we come now uh, to this time of prayer, we thank God that we have uh, a God who hears and answers our prayer. My brothers and sisters, I don't know what I would do in this world if I didn't have a God I could pray to. Uh, with all that's happening around us, we ought to be glad that we can go to God in prayer any time of the day and call on him and God will answer. Have I got a witness here? God will answer our prayer. And so as we come to him this morning, let us come with faith. Let us come knowing that God is able to do all we ask of him. Let's say a special prayer this morning for one of our uh, newer members, uh, uh, Sister Rhoda Smith. Spoke to her this morning, and uh, she has been ill for a few days now and prayed that God will strengthen her and that God will supply all that she, need, uh, she needs during this time of illness. Uh, we pray that God will let his healing hand fall fresh on her body and give her the healing that she needs in her body. Uh, God is a doctor. Uh, in fact, someone said he's a great physician and he has never lost a patient. Amen. So let's trust uh, God. Let's pray for her this morning and pray that God would be with her. Continue to pray for uh, the Byron family, the Jenkins family, and others who are now going through uh, this time of bereavement, the Blanding uh, family, and pray that God will give them the peace and the strength that they need at this time. Sometimes when I'm on my knees before the Lord, I can't help but say, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, my prayer, my request is, Lord, please, please do not pass me by. Anybody want to pray that this morning? Oh, pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Mm, hear my arm uh, cry. You can go ahead and reach out to him. Why on others thou art calling? Do not pass. Come on, y'all. Let's call his name. I'm calling say. Savior, oh blessed Savior, in my arms of oh, 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 Master, 
Eternal God, our Father, once and again we come before your throne of grace to obtain mercy. But before we give you our petitions today, we want to give you our praise. God, you have been good to us. Someone said, God, you have brought us a mighty long way. And Father, all we can do is just take a moment just to say thank you for being so good to us. We went to bed last night, Father, without the guarantee of waking up this morning. Yet early this morning, you touched us with your finger of love. And you allowed us to rise out of our beds and see another day. Father, we say thank you. Because God, we know that if our enemies had a vote in this decision, that we wouldn't be here today. But we thank you for looking beyond our faults and our failures and allowing us to see another day. Father, before we go any further, we ask you now to please have mercy upon us. Forgive us, O oh God, for our disobedience, those things we have done, O oh Lord, that were wrong in your sight. We beg you now, God, please have mercy upon us. We pray as David prayed, oh God, create within us clean hearts and renew within us, oh God, the right spirit. As we come to you, Lord, we bring the many requests that have been mentioned, those who are going through bereavement, others going through illness. We pray, God, that you will have mercy. We pray, God, that you will make your presence and your power manifested in these situations. We're not going to tell you, God, how to do what you do. We just ask you, God, to fix it. We just pray, God, that you show up and do what you do, and that is to bring a change in our many difficult situations. We ask, God, that you will continue to bless the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. We pray, God, that you will continue to draw us closer to you each day. Help us to be the church that you're calling for in these last and evil days. Father, we know that these days are indeed evil. But God, you promised that you would never leave us. You promised God that you would never forsake us. And so we ask now that you will please continue to abide here at the West Hyersville Baptist Church. Bless our membership. Bless our ministries, oh God, as we reach out to this community and even around the world, I pray God that we will be able to touch somebody's life first with the gospel and then, Lord, with your goodness. Lord, there's trouble everywhere in the world today. We hear of wars, we hear of conflict, and then we hear, oh God, of the many atrocities suffered by innocent men, women, boys, and girls. And so right now, God, we pray for your covering. We pray for your protection to fall around these individuals, around these people. And then, God, bring leaders to their senses, oh God, to know that, that the killing and destruction, that these things, oh God, does no one any good. They need to come together to see how they can resolve their conflict. Please bring peace to this troubled world. We thank you for this time of worship today. We ask you, God, to bless the preacher who will stand behind this sacred desk to deliver unto us, O oh God, what you have delivered unto him. I pray, God, that when we hear your word today, that we will be more than just hearers of your word, but, God, we will be doers of your word, that we will leave this house today going forth with the zeal, with the commitment, to put into practice the principles and precepts we learn from the preaching on today. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. 
Not just for what you have done. But God thank you for who you are. I pray Lord that if there be one in this service today. Who has not yet given his or her life to you. One who has not received Jesus. As Lord and Savior. I pray God this will be their day of salvation. When they will come asking. What must I do to be saved? We thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you in advance for the answers you're going to give. We thank you now for yet another worship experience. Bless us in this service. Let your presence explode in this service. So when we leave here, we will know that surely we have been in the presence of the Lord. This is our prayer, we pray in Jesus' name. Let us all sit together. Amen. Amen. Oh, while, while on others thou art calling. Me by Amen. Trust God today, my brothers and sisters. Trust him today and know that whatever you have given to him, that God will show up and will bless you right on time. Reverend Faye Bostic will come now and read our scripture for today. Good morning. I'm going to be reading from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 12 from the NIV. And it reads, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, it is no use. We will continue with our own plans and we will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. Praise God for his word, amen. It is indeed a privilege and a pleasure to introduce our preacher for uh, today. Uh, this is a a gentleman I have known for well over 40 years. Uh, we have served together in ministry, uh, both in Liberia and here in these United States. Uh, you had him as pastor uh, for seven blessed years. And uh, he blessed you and he is continuing to do the work that God has assigned to his hands. 
I preach it today is no stranger, so this is more of a presentation and not an introduction. Uh, he is the Reverend Emmett Lafayette Dunn, uh, currently serving as Executive Secretary of the Lacare Convention, uh, former pastor of the West Hyattsville Baptist Church, but most importantly, child of God and servant of the Most High God. So what I want you all to do today is to pray for him and pray with him, support him as he will come and stand behind this sacred desk. He is going to give to us what God has given to him. And so let us worship and witness with him as he will come and preach. The choir is going to sing. And after this election, the next voice you will hear will be that of my friend and my brother, the Reverend Emmett Dunn. Again, pray with him as he shall come and break unto us the bread of life. Amen.
It's indeed uh, a great joy to be back in this place. Amen. Pastor Rinsbury, thank you for your graciousness. I, I did, however, notice the intonation in your voice when you said I was the former pastor. <laughs> I, I, I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. But thank you for your graciousness and my wife Sue and I we are we have fond memories of being in this place yes, sir. Yes, sir. and our commitment is to be at your call whenever you find it necessary on this eve of the nation's Independence Day I wish each of you happy July 4th whatever it means to you and in spite of all of the shortcomings and limitations of these United States, I stand as a proud immigrant to say that I appreciate and I'm grateful to God for these United States with all of its shortcomings and limitations. So congratulations for these many years of independence and I pray that God will continue to shower God's blessings on the leadership that they will lead us in ways that will bring glory and honor to God. We've heard the scripture read from Jeremiah, Jeremiah 18, what I refer to as a very familiar Sunday school story. Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house based on God's invitation not to listen to a sermon, but to see one. And from that uh, scripture that was taken from Jeremiah 18, I like to talk about uh, the changeability of God. Yes, the changeability of God. Or you just say simply, God is subject to change. Yes. Now, I know that that may sound strange because we've always heard that God never changes. That God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We sing songs, Brother Diggs, of, uh, uh, that God never changes. Because I guess when we attach the word change to God, it seems almost a negative thing to talk about a God who changes. We celebrate the fact that we serve a God who never changes. But I'm not making this up though, but, but, but God himself said that, that he will change. And in this text, in this simple uh, Bible, Bible story, we, we come to see God saying to Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah, like most of the other prophets of old, they were tasked with the responsibility of becoming a mouthpiece for God. And there were times when they would bring uh, news of great tidings of joy. But there were other times when they uh, were moved to come to say to Israel that you have fallen short of the glory of God. 
It is within this context that Israel finds herself once again. Israel have gone backwards in their relationship with God. And God appoints Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. And there I want you to hear my word. And Jeremiah goes down and he sees the, he sees the potter uh, forming an image from clay. And as he pays attention, the, the clay uh, is, is, is marred. The clay is deformed. And so he takes the clay and he reships it mm -hmm. to something beautiful. Yes, and it is in that image, it is in that, that, that God says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, pay good attention because what you're looking at mm -hmm. is Israel. He said, I can do with Israel exactly what the potter has done with the clay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, just as the clay is in the hands of the potter, so to Israel is in my hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just as the clay is in the hands of the potter, so to Israel is in my hand. In other words, as the potter can do whatever he desires with the clay. I, too, can do whatever I desire with Israel. Right. He said, but right now, Israel is in a dangerous place. Yes, For Israel have turned her back on everything that I've asked her to do. Yeah, yeah. He said, but this is the message I'm sending through you to Israel. Mm -hmm. Tell Israel. Mm -hmm. It's a simple message. If they act right, mm -hmm. I would change the plans mm. I have for them. Yeah. In the word, in the word. Yes, sir. If they act right. Now, I know you all like this, this famous uh, passage that say, I know the plans I have yeah. for you. Right, right. Plans to bless you and not to... You all love that, 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 that verse. That's not a bad, that's a beautiful verse. You all love that verse. I like to remind you that verse was not intended for you. <laughs> we like to take all of the promises in the Bible and think those promises are for us. I know other preachers may tell you something different, but God's promises were specific and for specific people. You are not Israel. You have never been Israel. So that promise was for Israel. That God said, I have plans for you, plans to, 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 to do good for you. Now, when God is talking to Jeremiah in this text, Israel had been acting up. And so God is reminding them that that plan I have for you is about to change. He said, but I'm going to give you an opportunity. He said, if you act right. Now, the King James Version, which I, I, I don't like to use, the King James Version in verse 8 says that, that if you repent, then I will repent. That's King James. Now, you all know my view on King James. But I like the NIV view when the NIV says that if you repent, I will relent. Mm -hmm. Because the word repent has a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. The word repent means that, that you are turning back from something that you've done wrong. And to say that God repents is to say that God has done something wrong and God is doing a Michael Jackson on you. He's doing the moonwalk. He's, he's stepping back, you know. For those who, you know, for those who don't know who Brother Jackson was, you know. But we come, and I just like to, to drop in your spirits three reasons why I believe God is a changeable God. Three reasons. The first thing I like to, to, to lift up for your hearing is that God is a changeable God because God is sovereign. Yes, sir. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because God, now that word may sound like a big word for us, for you non-church people if you're not, but the sovereignty of God simply says that God can do whatever God wants, whenever God wants, whatever, and with whomever God wants. That's what makes God sovereign. In other words, God acts with God's self. Yes, sir. God does not need anyone yes, to act with him in order for God to produce something in your life. Mm -hmm. In the very beginning of the Bible, it starts off with the sovereignty of God when the Bible said, in the beginning, the beginning. God yes. created. The Bible starts, the Bible declare in the very beginning, the Bible does not suggest mm -hmm. that there was a God. You're right. The Bible in its very beginning affirms yes, because before yes, the sir. Bible was, there was God. Yes. And so the Bible says that in the beginning, God created God art in conformity with God's self. Whatever conversations God had in order to bring us into existence, God had that conversation with God's self. Yes, sir. And so that's what made God sovereign. And the world, the logical mind, can comprehend sovereignty. You're right. Because the logical mind always believes that something plus something equals something. Whereas with God, God brought something out of nothing. Everything that came into being came into being out of nothing because the sovereignty of God spoke with God himself and he said, let there be and there was. And because God is sovereign, all decisions by God is made by God. Now understand that when we speak of the sovereignty of God and we speak to the fact that God is in control of everything mm -hmm. does not suggest that everything that happens mm -hmm. is ordained by God. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Just because God holds the world in his hands doesn't mean that everything that happens in the world is ordained, meaning God sanctions it. God said, let it be. On the eve of this Independence Day, the United States, the countries all over the world, celebrate independence. One of the things that America prides itself for is that we are the land of the free. We are free. Yeah. We celebrate our freedom. No matter how destructive it is to your neighbor, you still say, I am free because I am an American. <laughs> and we celebrate that word because it's a good word. Freedom is a beautiful thing. Men and women have died. Men and women continue to die so that we have the freedom free. that we celebrate. Yes, freedom sir. is a glorious thing. But freedom can be destructive if we use it out of its context. Yes. And so even as we celebrate freedom in this nation, God has given his people absolute freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of being in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. God invites us to be. He doesn't make us to be. That may sound funny, right? It's strange. Because if God was making us to be, we would have no sin in the world. We'll all be perfect people because God will be made us perfect people. What God has done, God has created the atmosphere for us to be good people. God have created the tools, given us the resources for us to be neighborly, for us to be kind, gentle, loving, compassion. The reason why we act up like Israel did in this text is because God 
because of God's sovereignty, he gives us absolute freedom. Absolute freedom. And freedom came at its very beginning of the existence of the world. When God created Adam and Eve, Eve and Adam, Adam, he gave them total freedom, even though he gave them limitations. Yep, yep. Don't do this. But because of the freedom that God gave them, they were free to misbehave. They were free to misbehave. And so we celebrate the fact that God is a changeable God because God is sovereign. There is absolutely nothing that can happen in the universe that is outside of God's influence and authority. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God has absolutely no limitations. And because of God's sovereignty, God becomes worthy of our worship, worthy of our praise, worthy of our allegiance, and worthy of our fellowship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, because God is sovereign and God has given us this freedom to be who we are and who we want to be, God is worthy of all of our being. So God is a changeable God because God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. But God is also a changeable God because God is merciful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is merciful. Now, now don't, don't misunderstand. Just because I say God is a changeable God, we, we need to understand what about God that changes. Mm -hmm. What about God that changes is God's attitude towards man's or humanity behavior. Mm. Understand this now. What is changeable about God is God's attitude, God's disposition to humanity's behavior. God adjusts, huh, God adjusts his actions yep. based on our reaction. It's like... Uh, in, in science, they call that Newton's second law of motion. I think that's what it is. Yeah. To, to everything, there is a, to every action, there's an equal. Oh, oh yeah, got some science student in here this morning. Yeah. But understand this God's nature never changes. God's disposition towards human behavior changes, but God's nature never changes changes God will always be love God will always be just God will always be compassionate God will always be all-knowing all-powerful everywhere because God's nature never changes I don't want a God who forgives me on Monday and changes his mind to forgive me on Wednesday God will always be a forgiving Forgive God. Yes, and God's promises never change. Uh -huh. You're right. Thank the Lord. So the nature of God, the omnipotent God, uh -huh. the omniscient God, the omnipowerful God, never, never change. changes. But God's attitude to us, his disposition toward us, changes. And it's very clear in this text. He said, if Israel repent, I will adjust the plans I have for them. He changes not only because he's sovereign. He changes because he's a merciful God. And God's mercy, we've come uh, to understand that God's mercy is of such that we, we do not deserve it. God being merciful basically means that when we deserve punishment, mm -hmm. he doesn't punish us. And in fact, blesses us instead. Because what mercy really is, mercy is withholding of a just condemnation. Right. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, mercy doesn't mean that we did not sin. 
Mercy simply means, Emmett, I know you messed up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not, I'm not, you may have, but you, no, no, no. no. It's, you, it's you not, it. there's no shade of gray in mercy. It's black or it's white. You've messed up. And because you messed up, this is what you deserve. Yeah, you're right. Somebody say, somebody say, but it's a conjunction. <laughs> but, because, because, because for those who are of uh, English major in here, you know that whenever there's a conjunction, there are two sides to the story. Uh, there's always something here, and then a conjunction ties the before and after. And most time, the after is always better than the before. Have you seen those TV commercials at 2 o'clock in the morning? When you can't sleep, you know, the IRS is on your mind, uh, or that nagging spouse of yours is on your mind, you can't sleep, or, or, or sometimes that, 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 that illness of your spouse is on your mind, and you can't sleep, you know, or that late night meal you ate you should not have eaten, you can't sleep, two o'clock in the morning, and you're watching television, Brother Morris, and, and you see these commercials. I wonder who allowed those commercials to come on. Because some of the after you know will never happen. No matter how much money or surgery you take, there are just some things on your body will never be corrected. There's no need to try. But, but God, 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 God comes and he says what? You have been condemned. Judgment has been passed. But. The story is told of this lady who, whose son is in uh, the, the, the armed forces of the great legendary Napoleon. Uh, but her boy was one who acted up all the time. And, and so when he messed up for the third time and he was about to be court-martialed, uh, the mother came to Napoleon to plead for mercy. And, and, and Napoleon said to her, your son deserves justice. Mm. And she said, I don't come to ask for justice. She said, I come to plead for mercy. And he said, your boy does not deserve mercy. And the mother said to Napoleon, sir, if he deserved mercy, then it wouldn't be mercy. Because no one deserves mercy. But because God's nature is one of mercy, he allows us to come and to stand before him and to plead mercy. And God relents, in other words, God turns from one to the other just to grant us that second chance for some of us, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth chance. So, so God is a change for God because God is sovereign. God is a change for God because God is merciful. And then God is a change for God because God keeps his word. God keeps his word. Because for God's word not to be kept is to say that God is not really sovereign. To say that God is not really in control. To say that God doesn't do what God said that he will do. But there's something else in this text that we need to wrestle with and accept. Because one of God's promises in this text says to Israel that if you do this, then I will do that. Yeah, yeah. And so what God has done, God has basically said to Israel, the ball is in your court. Yeah. The, the ball is in your court. What you do with it 
will determine the outcome of this conversation. Have you ever been around a negotiating table before? And you come with a proposal and you, you, you put it down and, and you think you got it all made and, and the person across the table put out a counter proposal and just put the spotlight on you and it's like, what am I gonna do next? That's what happened here. Israel messed up. God had put forth a proposal. God has put forth a proposal. Yes, sir. God is saying to Israel through Jeremiah, mm -hmm. if you do this, I would do that. Mm -hmm. And Israel had no reason to doubt God because Israel knew that way back when, mm -hmm. when they were only referred to as the Hebrew nation, mm -hmm. wow. when they were in slavery in Egypt, God brought them out of a situation that they knew nobody else could have but God. Right. And so they had no reason to doubt God's actions and abilities. You're right, man. You're right. Yes, sir. But watch how they responded to God's proposal mm -hmm. in this text. Mm. Simply, don't bother us. Mm. We will do exactly mm. what we want to do. Again, that is the beauty of freedom. You're free to even do wrong. You're free to even do wrong. But there are consequences. There are consequences. So what is it that God wants from us? What is it that God is calling us to be and to do? That the first thing God is asking us, God wants us to adjust our actions in accordance with God's will. You're right. You're right. God wants us to, uh, uh, to put ourselves in that position where we come to realize that if we do the right thing, then God will take care of the rest. Because the fact of the matter is, in God's hands, we can be all that God wants us to be. In God's hands, we can be all that God wants us to be. Because the fact of the matter is, life has its twists and turns. Yes, sir. Nothing in life is, is surety. Nothing in life is guarantee. In right. this country, we say, except the fact that we have to stay black and pay taxes. But nothing else in, in life yes, is actually guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And because nothing is guaranteed, uh, you buy uh, a beautiful Bentley. I, I heard that on pastor's anniversary, you all give him a Bentley. Yeah. You didn't do that for me, but you know, I don't, I don't hold against you. But, but, but you, you drive up the parking lot <laughs> with a beautiful, well, you can give it to him. I hope you increase the salary with the price of gas. <laughs> he may not be able to afford to keep it. You can drive off with a beautiful Bentley. But you never drive off the lot without calling Geico. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how good driver you are, mm -hmm. no matter all of the safety features you may have on a Bentley. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, Bentley is a car. You have to call Geico you have to. because you know that life has twists and turns. You could build a house in the most secure neighborhood with locked gates and high fences. But you still have to call the home insurance company. You're right. You still have to install cameras because you know life has its twists yes, and turns. Yes, sir. No matter how smooth a highway may be built, mm -hmm. ever so often there's a detour mm -hmm. and that's a ramp that leads you on other roads that may not be so smooth because life has its twists.
twist and turn. There is nothing guaranteed in this life. Yes, sir. And that's why we always have to find ourselves in the hand of one who has the ultimate insurance and assurance. Yes, because go home and read your insurance policies. My, my, my. <laughs> I don't care how much you pay for it. There's always something called the fine line. Yeah. Or the, the fine print. And when you read the fine print, you will never find the word assurance. Because you see, assurance is to guarantee yes, that no matter what the situation is, yeah, yeah, yeah. we will be there for you. Yeah. Mm. Don't think because you have a flooded basement mm. that the insurance will cover it. Because to start to ask questions such as this, was the water from inside or outside? Did it come from a leaking pipe or from under the foundation? They're fine, trying to find a way not to pay for the damages. So they will never give you assurance. But when you have your life, in the hand of the Almighty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not only do you have an assurance, yes. but you have an assurance yes. that no matter what life brings your way, yes. that God will take care of you. Yes. In the midnight hour, God is there. In the noonday heat, God is there. In the morning, God is there because God is a sovereign God who yes. keeps his promise to his humanity. Life has its twists and turns. And God says to Israel, like he says to you, and he says to me, like the potter, keep your life in my hands. Because my hands are better than all state. My life, my hands are better than progressive. In my hands, yeah. you will be safe. In my hands, you may weep, but I will dry your tears. In my hands, I will rock you in the middle of the night. In my hands, I will mold you and I will make you and I'll ship you. And I might even break you, but I will put you back together. Because I... And my God, who changes but stay the same? Yes, God bless you today. Happy Independence. Oh, what a word, what a word, what a word. And this is the assurance for someone who does not know this God. If you are in his hand, you're in a safe place. If you are in his hands, as, as the preacher said, you're in a merciful place. The choice that he gave to Israel it's the choice he gives to you. You have a choice right now to turn your life into the hands of a merciful God. You've been living life on your own terms. You figured you know what you're doing, so you're going to make your own rules and follow your own direction. Can I encourage you today? On this day, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to the man who died for you on the cross of Calvary. The one who is able to give you life in abundance and life everlasting. But that begins with you coming to him just the way you are and asking him 
to save your life. We extend this invitation to you today to come and give your life to Jesus, to receive him as your Lord and your Savior. And here's the good news. He'll save you. Oh, yes, he will. He'll say he'll come into your heart. And yes, he will change you. But you have to give him your heart, your mind, your life. Open up and say, Jesus, come in. There may be one here today who is a Christian, but you don't have a church home. You do not have a church you can call your own. You do not have a pastor that you can call your own. We invite you to come now and join the West Hyersville Baptist Church. Why don't you come? You may come by baptism. You may come by a letter from another church. Just come as you are and we will receive you. The invitation is extended to you right now. Come just the way you are. In my mind, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. choice. The song says the road is rough. Oh, the road. The going is and the hill. Ah, hard to find. I started out, I start a long time ago. Mm, there is no doubt in my mind. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. The good news is he chose us before we chose him. And today he is still saying to us, come just the way you are. Let's give God praise for this preacher today. Amen. Who preached out of his heart a few years ago when I was pastoring in uh, Tennessee at the Gravel Hill Baptist Church I preached one Sunday and uh, a deacon came to me after church said to me brother pastor I said yes sir I did so you walked a dog today <laughs> I said I did what he said you walked a dog today I'm from Liberia yeah, I, I, I don't know what he's talking about so I called another deacon. I said, uh, I said, someone told me today I, I walked the dog. What is he talking about? He said, oh, brother pastor, he's just trying to tell you, you preached well. So today, uh, Emmett. Uh, He walked the dog, walked the cat, walked the cow, walked the zebra. He walked the whole animal kingdom. I mean, he preached it. Come on, let's give this preacher. Hey. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's really difficult uh, to sit and <laughs> listen to another preacher preach because you want to jump up there so fast. <laughs> let, let me get some, Reverend. Let me get some. But I'm glad that he brought that text to us today because I'm glad we're in the hands of a God who knows we deserve judgment and justice. Oh, but he says to us, I'll give you mercy. And all of us are here today because of God's mercy. And I am glad that we serve a merciful and a gracious God. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Is there anyone here today who is visiting with us for the first time? You've never been in these doors before. If you're here today for the first time, please stand. For the first time. Please stand. <laughs> there you go. Amen. The ushers are coming around to, to give you uh, some information. And please stay in touch with us. There's a form in there. Please fill that form. Remain standing now. I got to pick on y'all some more. Uh, let's get some names over here. I'm sorry? Ray McGee, okay. And name? Valerie. Valerie. And those are your little sisters? Okay. God bless you. Come on, let's appreciate them. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to worship with us today. We really hope that this service was a blessing to your life. And listen, don't let this be your last time. Come on back and visit again. Those doors are always open. Come and visit us again. We'd love to have you, and we praise God for your presence today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Welcome. She's telling on y'all. <laughs> yeah. Let me get your names, please. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh oh. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and worship. Yeah. I, I have fond memories of Macon, Georgia. And that's all I'm going to say. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, Georgia. <laughs> all right, ushers, it's time to give some money. Amen. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for the offering. Thank you, O oh God, for the tithes that are about to be given. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us something to bring into your house today. And we pray now, Lord, that the, the money, the tithes, the offering, the gifts that will be given today will be used in kingdom building. This is our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, that you will give your tithes and your offering. Also remember, today is the first Sunday when we will be giving our benevolent offerings. Our deacons will lead in that as we give in this time. For those of you who are watching by way of Facebook or live stream, you can give on our website, whpchurch.org. You can go there and you will see a give button. Just hit that button and it will take you through the process to give your offering on today. Amen? Amen. Let us give.
Amen. We thank you for what you have given on today. The Bible teaches us that God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, we shall now prepare our hearts to uh, participate in the Lord's Supper. And as we do, I ask that you search your heart, your mind, your spirit as we look toward the purpose, the power, the meaning of this ordinance that we participate in. That Jesus became our sacrifice so that we would be here on this day. Deacons, will you please come? My brothers and sisters, we've come to celebrate one of the ordinances of the Christian church. This ordinance reminds us, first of all, of God's love for us, and then reminds us of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. Salvation is free. But his love was costly. It cost him his life. It was painful. This graceful death on that cross. But because God loved us so much, he gave his only begotten son who became the sacrifice for our sin. And so with grateful hearts, we approach this moment grateful for what God did by sending his son grateful for what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. As we begin this celebration, let us observe a responsive reading printed in your bulletin, and we shall be led in this reading by the Reverend Faye Bostick. The Lord's table. Let us come with a spirit of humility and penitence. Join us. 
us, we pray. Let us examine ourselves, our thoughts, our actions, our motives, and our attitudes toward others. Holy God, have mercy on our shortcomings. Help us to remember our responsibility to our families and our neighbors, our stewardship to you and the work you have given to our hands. O oh, living God, we stand in need of your grace, strength, and mercy. As we eat the bread, which represents Christ's body, which is the true and living bread, open our eyes to recognize the intimacy that you yearn to share with us. O oh, loving God, teach us to love you above all else. As we drink the cup, which represents Christ's blood shed for us, we thank you for the new covenant. Love ye one another, which is written in on our hearts. Let us rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Tender Father, may your great sacrifice of redeeming love renew us for our long service and sacrifice for us. May this Lord's Supper energize every area of our lives and enable us to transcend our, our circumstances, our inadequacies, and our enemies. We praise you, O oh God, who make us your own people through the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Abide in us, Savior and Redeemer. Fill us with life-giving power of your Spirit, now and forever. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of remembrance. We thank you for this time of celebration. We thank you, O oh God, for this moment of reflection. And we come now asking you to bless these elements so that as we partake of them, that we will be appreciative and that we will give you the honor and the praise for all you have done for us. We eat this bread, O oh God, because it represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we drink of this cup because, O oh Father, it reminds us of the blood of Jesus. We ask now that as we partake, that we would cherish the meaning, the essence, the significance of this celebration, and that it would draw us even closer to you as we live for you each day. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Paul says, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he has supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us now celebrate the Lord's Supper. What a snow, no, the fountain. 
Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. sisters we hold in our hands elements representing the blood and the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ his body was broken pierced torn ripped apart his blood was shed for our sins. As we partake of this today, let us take it with a heart of gratitude for what God has done for us through Jesus. Let us commune together. Scripture tells us that after they had Commune. They sang a hymn and went into the Mount of Olives. They did not go to talk about what they had just done and hang around and have a good time. No, they went to work. 
because there was work to be done. And so West Highlandsville Baptist Church, we have met for worship. Now let us leave to serve. Let us stand. Father, we thank you for all we have experienced in this service today. Thank you, O oh God, that your nature doesn't change. But because of your mercy, you change what you would do to us when we disobey you. Thank you for the Reverend Emmett Dunn who has come and blessed us today. Thank you for what we have felt in this worship service today. And now, God, as we leave this place, I pray you walk with us. I pray you talk with us. Oh, God, lead us along the way. Now that we have come here to worship, oh, God, we are leaving to serve you, serve humanity, so that everybody would know we are serving a true and a living God. Bless again all those whose names were mentioned in prayer today, the bereaved and those who are sick. And pray, Lord, if it is your will, that you will bring us back together again next Sunday as we shall come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest Rule and abide in our hearts from now henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the time. God bless you all. That binds our heart. God bless you, man. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Send love.